What's up guys, Thomas from FJ86 Speed Factory and in the last video we took a tour of our shop and in this video we're going to do a build breakdown on the two FRSs, the BRZ and the 86 behind me. We're going to essentially go through all of the parts that we've used to modify them. Now we're gonna be starting with a car that I'm most familiar with, which is the 8.6. And right off the bat, most people will notice the stance of the car, so the suspension and the wheels. And for suspension, we're running Fortune Auto Prime coilovers, and we've got them in the maximum lowest setting in the rear and about matched for the front. Um, they do have front camera plates, so we can adjust some camera up there, but I want a little bit more, especially for autocross, so in the future we might be throwing on some camber bolts, just get like an extra degree or half a degree of camber. Um, now for camber adjustment in the rear, we have RSR lower control arms. Those will give you a ton of adjustability for rear negative camber. And if you do get crazy with your negative camber, you will go outside the adjustment for your toe alignment because the more negative camber you add, the weirder the toe gets. So we do have our FT86 Speed Factory adjustable toe arms in there as well. Now for wheels, we're running the Ray's Gramlite 57 CRs. Those are an 18 by nine and a half with a plus 38 offset. We've got them in E8 gold on the driver's side and eternal blue on the passenger's side. And those are wrapped in some Bridgestone RE71R tires that are 255, 35, 18s. Now that's like the perfect tire size for a car that has coilovers, because with coilovers, you can get a little bit of camber to tuck that inside, that, that tire inside the fender well. So if you wanna run a 255-35, make sure you have coilovers and just at least like two degrees of negative camber in the front. Now for the front, the biggest change are these FT86 Speed Factory sequential headlights. They have blacked out housing, which looks cool, and they also have the functionality of the sequential turn signals. Below that, we have fog lights installed since this car didn't come with one from the factory. And then up front in the center, we have gloss black emblems, and we also have the matching one for the rear. Now if we move to the side, we've got Intex fender grounders with the integrated turn signal. We've also got these smoked side markers with the upgraded LED light bulb from OLM. And in the rear, we have Valenti CBW taillights with a rear bumper gold pinstrap. Now when it comes to the engine stuff, we haven't done a ton of stuff that's gonna make a lot of horsepower out of this thing. We've really only done things that have refined what it's already outputting. So we've got a upgraded Mishimoto radiator as well with their uh, red coolant hoses, just to make sure this thing does not overheat. Um, we've got the Open Flash Tablet 2.0. We've got the Stage 1 tune on here that kind of alleviates that little torque dip. Does a good job at filling in that torque dip, even just with a Stage 1 tune. And then for the exhaust, we have our center exit cap back exhaust. Oh, and also we have the Fumoto oil drain valve that makes oil changes on this thing super easy. Uh, for the interior, it's pretty uh, subtle as well for the upgrades in here, except for the IRP short shifter. This thing is anything but subtle. Uh, this is a 60% reduction in throw, but it's also like twice the height of the stock shifter. Normally, like as you increase this, the, the tallness, the height of the shifter, you also increase the length of the throw, but this one is short and tall at the same time. I really like this, um, but it's not gonna be the quietest shift knob if you're, or shifter if you're trying to daily this and be as quiet as possible. Like, if, if you want that, get like a cart boy or, or the FTA6 Speed Factory short shifter. Those will be a lot quieter. Next to that, we have this red shift boot. Pretty sure this is a prototype and this isn't on the website, but before we had this red one, um, we had an Alcantara with a red stitching one, just like the one on our e-brake boot. And for our e-brake handle, we have the carbon fiber one that we just swapped out. That's super easy. There's just some, some set screws in here and you, you rip the old one off. Then we also have a red drift button, which will act like a drift button if you take out the spring. If you take out the spring, it doesn't doesn't latch on, so you can just rip it real quick to your drifting, and then it'll flop back down like it's it won't stick, which is cool. And those are super, super cheap. Like you could pick this up for like 20 or 30 bucks and have the best bang for fun mod probably out there if you don't mind wearing your tires out. Um, we also, on the gauge, we have a Magna uh, F Sport gauge cluster, which is pretty sweet. Ours is in kilometers an hour, which makes you think you're going a lot faster than you actually are. Um, but they're all they're also available in miles per hour. This one was just 
the early release one and we got a bunch of miles per hour ones available on our website too. We also have one for the uh, BRZ. It's like more red themed and it's an STI style. Uh, that one's pretty neat too if you've got a Subaru. Um, that's about it for the interior. Oh, we also have the GCS footwell lighting kit, RGB colors, like a bunch of colors. You can set the dimness, the brightness, and it'll even pulse with um, your music if that's what you're into. And moving on to the BRZ, it doesn't have nearly as much stuff as the 8.6, and clearly it's still in a bunch of pieces and I have to put it back together. Um, but starting with suspension right behind me, we have the Tane Street Basis Coilovers. Those are like the most affordable coilover you can buy right now. It does not come with camber plates and that cuts a lot of that cost out, but if you just want height adjustability, these are the best bang for buck for getting as low as possible. The engine on the BRZ is stock, even less stuff than the 8.6. All it has is a Motive overpipe connected to an NVIDIA front pipe. And then it's got the uh, stock mid pipe. And we normally would have had, it doesn't have a muffler right now, but before it had um, our single exit FT86 speed factory muffler delete. The shifter that's in here is the FT86 Speed Factory Short Shifter. That's not nearly as good as reduction with the IRP that has 60%, but ours has a 28 and a half reduction in throws. And David and I uh, thrashed the gears and tested it out a couple vlogs ago. You gonna give her the beans? The gauge cluster on here is the Magna STI style with all the red accents for the BRZ. It even has the STI logo etched on there. I dig this one, I think it's really cool. On the exterior, we have a couple cosmetic carbon fiber pieces. We've got the Rexpeed fender garnishes, and then we have also have the OLM side mirror carbon fiber covers. And then at the back of the car, we've got the Helix case shades that actually a lot of you guys have asked me if they're in stock and they used to be discontinued and that's what I had on the website, but now we've got a bunch in stock. So finally, I finally have an answer for you guys who've been asking. The case shades look really cool. These are the red versions. And then we also have a little accent strip, the little pinstripe in red for the rear bumper. Now on the complete opposite spectrum of the BRZ that just has a few modifications done, we have our blue time attack car, which It'd be easy to tell you what hasn't been modified because everything on this car has been touched, upgraded, or fabricated a new part. I think the only thing that I've found so far is the factory e-brake. The button and the grip are still OEM, but there's no center console and there's no e-brake boot. So that's the only thing I've found so far. Now, a few of the big modifications on this car, it's got a custom turbo kit and it's also got a custom dry sump oil system to keep constant oil pressure in the engine. So it's not, when you're, when you're doing a high force G turn that not all the oil is gonna go to one side and you're gonna start oil starvation on the, uh, the opposing cylinder. So this keeps constant lubrication through all high force Gs and that makes it a single seater since the oil reservoir is now where the passenger seat used to go. This thing has seen a bunch of weight saving, so everything is stripped out. It's also got a roll cage. Um, it's got a carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber doors that are super duper light. Then it also has a carbon fiber trunk and then a big rear wing from APR. And then if that's not cool enough, it's got a ML24 wide body kit and under those are some TE37, some Volk TE37s in blue. And those are an 18 by 11 with a plus 18 millimeter offset. So these are some super wide wheels. And then they're wrapped in some Hoosier uh, race slicks. And those are 295 30 18s up front. And in the rear, they're a little bit bigger at 315 30 18. Oh, and it also has this super, super awesome wrap. Okay, I had to break out my phone because there's just a super long list of stuff done in this car. Um, it's, I forgot about the sequential transmission. So this has a sequential shifter that costs a bajillion dollars, but it'll make you super duper fast. And uh, that's in there as well. I have no idea like how it works and how you find neutral, but um, that's in there as well. So that's a pretty, pretty crucial. It's gonna be like straight race car, like pulling gears like a rally car. It's got a fuel cell in the trunk right where the spare tire would normally go. Um, and then it also has a fire suppression system. There's two fire, uh, fire extinguisher canisters in the rear of the car. On the passenger side, where you'd have the little small window for the people in the back seat, that has now been converted um, to an air duct for the driver's helmet. And then to help keep the driver cool, there's also a cool shirt in there. So there's a cool that'll, cooler that'll pump some cold water through a shirt with piping for the driver to stay cool, because obviously there's no air condition in this car. 
There's a Sparco racing seat, I have a circuit seat, and then there's also a Sparco steering wheel with a quick disconnect. And behind the steering wheel, you'll be able to see the MoTeC instrument cluster, uh, instrument gauge. This is thing, this whole, this whole engine and fuel system, all this stuff is run from a MoTeC standalone ECU. So the cluster is pretty custom, it's really cool. I'll, uh, we should uh, hook this up and get a fresh battery on it so you guys can take a look at the whole uh, instrument cluster. And lastly for suspension, we've got KW coilovers. These are three-way coilovers and there's actually racing top hats on these coilovers. We swapped out the top hats because the racing ones allow for caster adjustment as well as camber adjustment. And they wanted both of that on this car. There's the FTA Six Speed Factory strut bar up front that has some custom powder coating to kind of add the, to the theme of the wrap. Um, there's Varus toe arms as well as Varus LCAs, lower control arms for camber adjustment. This thing is supposed to make 400 to 450 horsepower reliable, so it's not going to overheat. You could make more power, but we're staying around the 400 to 450 range to make a reliable power that's not going to explode because that's what happened last time. This thing blew up, but there's a bunch of fire and everything melted. And their goal for weight is about 27 to 2,900. That was an estimate. They haven't put this thing on the scales yet, but hopefully like somewhere around 2,700 pounds. Now that's like the gist of the build. There's so many like small, most of this car was like hand built, hand fabricated by our two fabricators when they're not making headers and exhaust systems for you guys. They're also working on this thing and cranking it out this awesome build. So there's all these like fine, there's no way to put this on paper and tell you all the stuff that's been done to it because I don't even know like, I probably only know half the stuff that's been done to this. Like there's small things like a little transmission cooler that's mounted parallel with the ground that has a little air scoop to cool the little transmission cooler and that's you can't even see that like until it's lifted and even if it's lifted you might even miss it like there's all these small things the roll cage was uh done like custom by our fabricator guys like all this stuff is super custom and they've done a great job and hopefully this is thing is going to be at road atlanta at grid life soon oh also the uh the custom dry sum system like they had to make custom pulleys for the crankshaft to make its own like drive belt for the the oil pump and all that stuff was cnc machined it was designed in like a software system like after a couple revisions because stuff it, it just wouldn't fit precisely and they had to like make revisions on revisions like all that stuff was custom made those are one-off pieces all to make this thing like a reliable 400 450 horsepower time attack car the ton of work has gone to this thing and hopefully we'll be able to see this thing out on the track and, and rip and shred, stretch them awesome times. Now moving on to our other FRS, this is the red FRS track car. And this car and the time attack car, which is now wrapped blue, but it's silver underneath. The silver and the red car are the two cars that started the FT86 Speed Factory brand. And eventually they sold off the red car to someone local. And that local actually wrecked it at a track event. So they bought it back and completely stripped it and made it a track car. So now it's got the roll cage, the race seat, the race steering wheel, the, the seats the same as in the time attack car, basically like, they're the same build on the base level to an extent. They're both track ready cars. The Times That car is just kind of insane and this one's a little bit more modest. The red car actually is turbocharged. It's the old, it's the first version, I guess, they did the turbocharger system from the Time Attack car, moved that over to this one that used to be NA, and then they put an even bigger turbo, the one that it's on now for the Time Attack car. It probably makes around 300 to 350 wheel horsepower. I don't think they've dynoed this a car anytime recently, but it doesn't have all of the crazy weight saving stuff as the uh, time attack car. It's only got a carbon fiber hood. The trunk and the doors are still factory, just wrapped over with this red design, but I'm pretty sure the shifter on here is stuck. It just has a weighted uh, racing shift knob. Now for the wheels, we have RPF ones in black and they are 17 by nines with a plus 35 offset. And they're running some Toyo R888 tires that are 245, 40, 17. We're also running some mild aero mods. We've got the Verus front splitter up front. And then in the rear, we're running their rear diffuser. And then poking out the side, we've got the V2 FT86 speed factory single exit uh, cat back system. And then the other side, of course, we've got the uh, exhaust hole delete plate. 
So yeah, that's a pretty thorough rundown of all the parts or most of the parts on our two FRSs, the BRZ and the 8.6. If you did see something that we didn't mention, um, comment and ask us down below and I'll do my best to find the answer or I'll find the person who built it and, and I'll question him. Um, with that, this is Thomas and I'll see you guys in the next video. And we're also running some, got the Verus front splitter and we're <laughs> front splitter and then we've also running <clears throat> Saw and we, we didn't cover it. Um, comment it in the 